Hi, I'm Denise Stars, and this is Oliver Hansen, and we're going to be talking to you today about our paper, Trans Time, Safety, Privacy, and Content Warnings on a Transgender Pacific Social Media Site. Um, first, we would like to note that when we use the term trans, we mean people whose current genders are different than that assigned at birth, and this specifically includes non-binary people. Uh, the internet has had substantial positive benefits for trans people, but online spaces are usually not designed for transgender people. Trans uh, social media users often use existing popular social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter uh, to post content related to their transitions. But these sites sometimes lack in their affordances and support for trans users and can sometimes be harmful or hostile for trans people. Trans Time is a social media site specifically for transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming, and questioning people. Uh, the site aims to be a space where trans people can document their transitions and build community in ways that they cannot on other sites. Because trans users' needs are often not fully supported by mainstream social media sites, there are many potential benefits to a trans-specific site. To examine these potential benefits, we ask, how can a trans-specific social media site uniquely support trans users? So we did a couple of different things, um, and also you can see here are demographics that you can read. Um, but we did six interviews with current trans time users. Uh, and we also did focus groups with a broader trans population, three sessions, uh, two was in Ann Arbor and one was in Philadelphia. And so I'm going to discuss three of the themes that contribute to trans time's ability to uniquely support trans people and that can inform future social media site design that supports trans individuals and communities. And so the first important aspect was safety. So what does an online safe space look like for trans communities? Next was privacy and audience. So how should privacy work on a site like this? And then finally, we looked at content warnings. So how should content warnings work on a social media site for trans and non-binary people? So looking at trans time as a safe space, one thing that we found is that the code of conduct, which uh, you see a screenshot of here, was actually really important to participants. And an online safe space for trans people really depended on the following factors. So small size, all trans user base, maintenance of boundaries, community-based contextual moderation, community guidelines, and lack of censorship. One participant said, I feel like it has a great possibility to be a safe space. I feel like it's necessary to have that kind of safe space because in other pages you always end up feeling or seeing this transphobia, which people don't realize they're being totally offensive. We also looked at privacy and audience on trans time. And in general, we found that participants preferred default settings to be more private rather than more public. And people also requested more granular privacy settings. Next, we looked at content warnings on trans time. And you can see an example here of how content warnings work on the site. People really discussed wanting to have more personalized content warnings. And one participant described this as a really lovely and good example of care woven into a tech artifact. Participants also described wanting a customizable block list and allow list for types of uh, words that they would or would not want in content they see, saw on the site. And one described this as having more nuance in what you're showing and what you're hiding is useful. Because I know there are certain tags that maybe you just want to see, and there are certain tags that you know you want to avoid. So despite the extra steps it took to tag content, participants in our study valued the extra information and the extra care that content warnings provided enough that they were willing to deal with uh, the added friction and the extra work of labeling content. So in summary, we found that there is space and need for a sustainable, long-term, trans-specific online space where people can share both exciting and mundane aspects of trans lives. And such a site could be made safe by employing the features that we found support safe space on trans time. So I want to thank the UM Institute for Research on Women and Gender for funding this work, and thank you. Thank you.